<laughs> Even if you want, but the Holy Spirit says no. Leave. Get out. Don't force things. The Holy Spirit is telling you like, no, 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 not this man. You are trying to force things. I will change him. <laughs> you wish a man on earth was changed by a woman. <laughs> <laughs> you will what? I will change him. <laughs> but the Holy Spirit prohibited us. Don't think we do not want to preach. I, don't, don't, don't ever think we, we don't want to do certain things in ministry. But the Holy Spirit says no. I, I'm not talking to you. Last year I, I want to do a big function. In Blanta, in the city of Blanta. I wanted to do another big function here in the city of Lilonga. I wanted to do a big function. The Holy Spirit says, You will not gonna do any crusade in this country. You will not gonna do any crusade, but only crossover. He says you will not gonna do it. And I, I told Prophet Hara here, he says, You will not gonna do any he said, if anything, you send the Prophet Hara to do the crusades, not you. He says, make sure you hide as possible as you can from Malawians. And then you come, hallelujah! Ah! <laughs> the whole, I want to, but I'm prohibited. I'm not permitted. I told you. Don't first thing. I said, why? The Holy Spirit says, you know what? The trouble you had in South Africa was it from men of God? They orchestrated all those things. You go on YouTube, all the fights we're having there, they are paid and funded by pastors who think you leave their churches for our ministry. And he said, if you pull up a revival in this town in now, he said, each man of God in this town will rise against you. He said, for now, don't do it. So he told me what is going to happen and when. You know how it must be done. I know it. That's why I love the Holy Spirit. Do you understand that? And then the Holy Spirit says, don't do it. Will you do it? People who keep on doing it, they didn't, they didn't hear the Holy Spirit. He tells you, he convicts you, don't do it. We are prohibited. He speaks through circumstances, situations can be a message from the Holy Spirit. Am I speaking to somebody right here? Situations can be what? A voice from the Holy Spirit. Situations can be the voice from the Holy Spirit. Let's go to number three. If you're following, raise up a hand. I'm following prophet. Don't worry. Like, so how would I know that it's the Holy Spirit talking? You will learn those things as we go. But you need to know that. How do you know it's the devil? How do you know it's the Holy Spirit? You learn that. But just know that he speaks through circumstances, situations. The Holy Spirit can talk to you. Sometimes you can actually go into fasting because of a situation. The Holy Spirit says, fast. And because you are so carnal, very carnal, you are very earthly, and you cannot descend the Holy Spirit. You will think it's you. But like, I'm planning to fast. What did you, did you say? I'm planning. Ne I should never hear anyone saying those words. You can't plan it. You should say, the Holy Spirit told me that I must fast tomorrow. Not I'm planning. That's why it fails. 
You have to involve the owner who told you to do it. Who told you? The Holy Ghost told me to come to Malawi for prayer for IVP. I was told by the Holy Ghost just that fact you already have answered. Because already you know you have been told by the Holy Ghost to come for prayer. You have been told by God. The Holy Spirit told me to go for prayer. So if he told you, he will give you a solution. But if you say, I'm planning to go to Papa, it's you planning it. You are removing the instruction. If the Holy Ghost tells you to do so, Am I talking to somebody right here? Exactly. This is it. Tell your neighbor if you have one. Say, I'm hearing the Holy Spirit. Come on, I can't hear you. Say it again. Say, I'm hearing the Holy Spirit. Speaking to me right now. Hallelujah. I was led by the Spirit. Not, I'm planning tonight. Mm, I want to put an alarm so i wake up and i pray i'm planning no you should no you cannot plan it on your own just thinking like um, i'm thinking to put an alarm to no you might have heard the holy ghost you should say the holy spirit told me that i should put up an alarm some when you grow up you're going to have a relationship with the holy spirit like some of us if i want to wake up at any time if I said three, if I said five in the morning, I promise you, I don't have to put an alarm. He will wake me up. Exact time. So if at this stage, he tells you, he says, put an alarm. Don't say, I thought, I planned. Because if you think you planned it, when the alarm rings in your phone krrr, to wake you up you go like ah you wake up like ah let me adjust it two hours more from 12 midnight i wake up at 2 a.m because it is you planning it but imagine you knowing the holy ghost told me that tonight i must wake up and pray because the holy spirit is telling you what's happening in heaven and the whole heaven everyone is busy ready to say we have an appointment to talk with, um, uh, what's your name? Mariano. Mariano. The whole heaven is ready at 2 a.m. With the Holy Spirit has already, God has communicated with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit according to the divine protocols. They have already communicated to you. And the Holy Spirit has told the Father to say, I have told him and he has put an alarm at 2. He will wake up and he's speaking with you. And heaven is ready to hear you are to talk in prayer and you wake up like ah you just i wake up at four heaven says ah, 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 ah. <laughs> the bible says they make mistakes because they do not understand the scriptures am i speaking to somebody here yes. am i talking to you yes you need to learn the holy spirit Understand that we, we said he speaks through what situations. Can we go to another point? Can we go to another point? I don't think I'm going to finish my points tonight, but we'll see where we can stop. The very interesting points hallelujah say amen all right, so let's go into another point. The Holy Spirit, He leads us. He can lead you.
in Romans 8, verse 14, the Bible says what? For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. Ever heard someone say, I'm looking for direction? Yeah, they do not yet have a, a proper relationship with the Holy Spirit. You can never be confused if you have the Holy Spirit. You put two mangoes on the table and you say, choose one. Which one is which one? Then I take those mangoes and I give you. Then I say, okay, this is mine and this is yours. Then I take them back and I hide them. And I bring them back and I give you. I say, which one was yours? You'd be like, ah, let me see. <laughs> which, which one is yours? Like, ah, I'm confused. They look alike. One with the spirit, we're just going to say this one. There are so many people who God wants to talk to them in that manner, but they will abuse the gift. I promise you, they will use that, that gift for gambling. It is the gift of the church, not for a casino. Unless God told you to say, go there and do it. Unless God told you. All right. The Holy Spirit has spoken to me, to, to some people. I told them, to say, you go, this is the number, and go and do it. They did it. But it's not a gift for the casino. Like you're going in there, shaka, rabba, rabba, the whole night. We want that gift in church. <laughs> <laughs> uh, am I talking to somebody right? So, God knows. He, he even knows. Like, ah, wait a minute. Yes, I know I can give you the Holy Spirit. Can even reveal to you the numbers and everything. But you have, you are not building a relationship with the Holy Spirit for your personal growth, for your spiritual growth. All you want to use the Holy Spirit for is for a casino. It's like ministry. We have got pastors and prophets and men of God. Who all they want is to be accurate on pulpit when I'm prophesying to people. No! Listen, the prophetic is not for the people. It is for you. It must be you living a prophetic life. It must be you being a prophetic. If, if you are prophetic alone with God, you'll be prophetic in front of people. You can't be prophetic only on pulpit like, just then like, I, I want to be prophetic. No! The life we live is prophetic. I hope you're getting me. Come on. I said, I hope you're hearing me. Yes. How many are getting what I'm trying to say? If you're hearing me, raise up a hand. Say, I receive. I receive. Being led by the Spirit. When the Holy Ghost is upon you, He begins to lead you. The Bible says, for those who are led by the Spirit are sons of God. If you are not led, no matter how you can finish the statement yourself. But you are not. So the Holy Ghost will lead believers. A good example we just saw on another point. We wanted to go but the Holy Spirit did not allow us. There are things you need direction right now. There are things you need to know. You will be led by the Spirit. You didn't know, you know, you know, in the Old Testament, you know, when David said, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down. In what? And then he said, What? He leads me. The one that said he leads me, it's not God the Father, it's God the Spirit. He can lead you where green pastures are in business. If the Holy Ghost can lead you into marriage, he can lead you into finance, he can lead you into a project. I was led by the Holy Ghost to do it. You can work. Preach it. 
We are led by the spirit who to pray for. I can go in church like this and a lot of people and I'll go just like this and I'll pass people, I'll pass this one and I'll lay a hand on someone. I'm not choosing. Like, ah, papa, papa, I don't like papa nowadays. Papa has never chosen me. Like really, just pass everyone, pass everyone like this. We are laid. If you just do things because you are doing it, it's dangerous. We are led by the Spirit to do it. So if you have the Holy Ghost, you are led by Him. You will be led. He will lead you into prayer. He will lead you into fasting. He will lead you go and apologize, ask for forgiveness. He is the one that will tell you you are wrong. Accept you are wrong. People without the Holy Ghost are the most stubborn people in the world. Even if they are wrong, they will say they are not wrong. There's no conviction. Don't ever say sorry. Am I talking to somebody right here? Raise your right hands and have the Holy Spirit. Oh, Holy Spirit, lead me. So the Holy Spirit can lead you. And we want to look at another point. Are you ready for this? We want to look another point that is very important. This point that we want to look is very important. And I want us to check this one. The Holy Spirit, when he is upon a believer or when he is upon you, he gives you spiritual gifts. Say he gives spiritual gifts. Say louder, say louder, say louder. He gives spiritual gifts. When the Holy Ghost is upon a believer, he gives you spiritual gifts. We're going to read this verse. Are you here or you're home or something just happened? First Corinthians 12 verse 8 to 11. Just read it for me quickly. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the spirit. To another the word of knowledge through the same spirit. To another faith by the same spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, descending of spirits. To another, different kind of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. Eleven. But one and the same Spirit works all these things. Distributing each one individually as he wills. Who distributes the spirit, the Holy Spirit? Okay, imagine that. As he wills. See, the Spirit works all these things, distributing as he wills. So the Holy Ghost gives believers spiritual gifts. What makes me to prophesy? I have a gift of prophecy. What makes you speak in tongues? You have a gift of tongues. Who gives you the Holy Spirit? He gives the gift of healing. The same Spirit. He gives the gift of what? Wisdom. The same Spirit. So we have people who have no wisdom. Like I don't even know. I, I'm confused. You need the Holy Ghost. Somebody with the Holy Ghost can never be confused. Because the Holy Ghost will give you the wisdom. So working of miracles. The Bible says working of miracles. It says the same Spirit. So if you have the Holy Ghost, you have got gifts. It's just that you do not know. They are not puppet gifts. I'm not talking to you. And these gifts do not, it's not only these ones. Please. They are not the only gifts that are here. If you go to Romans chapter 12, from verse 5, you hear even more gifts that are there. That people have. Go verse 6. 
it says, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If you prophecy, so there's a gift of prophecy. In verse 7, what other gift that is there? Or ministry, there is a gift of ministry. There are people, all what they want to be is to be in ministry. They just want to serve. Serving. These are gifts of the Holy Ghost. In verse 8, if you want, he who exhorts or exhortation, he who gives, giving is a gift. And you wonder why you just want to feel like you want to give, you want to help, you want to assist. It is the gift of the Holy Ghost. You have the Holy, you can never wish to be giving without the Holy Spirit. It is the gift of the Spirit. If it's the gift of giving, if it is what again over there, leadership, he who leads, so that's leadership, the gift of leadership. He who shows mercy. Now, so we have all these gifts of the Spirit. If you have the Holy Ghost, these gifts will begin to manifest in your life. So the Holy Ghost gives gifts to believers. He gives gifts to believers. You can speak in tongues. You can have the gift of healing. You can have the gift of uh, miracles. God can be using you in miracles as a gift. The Bible says he distributes these things himself. So if you have the Holy Ghost, you have the distributor of gifts. Am I talking to you? Am I speaking to somebody right here? So that's the Holy Ghost. Put your hands together for the Lord. I said put your hands, put your hands, put your hands. Hallelujah. So the Holy Spirit gives you gifts. And let me finish this statement. The Holy Spirit. I'm not finishing though. I'm just stopping here on these points. The Holy Spirit speaks to your spirit. I should never hear you again saying something was telling me. <laughs> never. It ends tonight. I want to hear you saying the Holy Spirit was telling me. Not something. I, I, something was telling me. Why did you say something? Ah, something was telling me to do it. The Holy Ghost speaks to your spirit. Man is creating its repair tight. We have the body, the soul, and the spirit. And your spirit is that is within you. Now the Holy Ghost can speak to your spirit. In Romans 8, let's, let's read Romans chapter 8. All right. I want us to read. Verse 16. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Now, did you hear that? Yes. Now, imagine this. The Bible says, the Spirit of God bears witness with our spirit. Do you know what that means? It means that the Spirit, like what makes you bold like i'm a child of god it looks so simple but it's not there is the spirit of god telling your spirit that you're a child of god the holy spirit can testify to your spirit that you're a child of god he speaks to your spirit there are things right now that you may actually not know but we have people right now who are watching me now they are sleepy, but they can't sleep. Because the spirit is telling to their, they is speaking to their spirit to watch. Did you hear that? Yes. The Holy Spirit 
is speaking to your spirit to say stay here and you are watching like this you have been dozing yeah. i rebuke you satan <clears throat> praise be to god no not god god Someone was praying, he was praying, he was praying, he was praying. All his prayers were being directed to his uh, house guard at his house. His security guard. <laughs> Go back to the scripture. Uh, the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Now, TPT. Let's read it in TPT. For the Holy Spirit makes God's fatherhood real to us as he whispers into our innermost being, you are God's beloved child. Did you hear that? So I was saying, what makes you to have the boldness, to keep on saying, I can pray, God will answer, I must sit here, I must... There is a voice speaking to your spirit that you are a child of God. Without that voice, you and me could not be sitting here tonight. But there is a voice that tells you that you are a child. The reason why other people out there, they do not believe the way you believe is because they do not have that voice. And they want you to be like them. They're like, oh, what, did, what are you believing? They want you to be like them. You have a voice. That speaks to your spirit. Ah, hallelujah. Amen. Say amen. amen. In Zambia, there is a song we sing, rather, they sing. They taught me in 2013. You see, even someone from Zambia just looking at me, he doesn't know the song, Jesus. <laughs> All right, so when we are dealing with the topic or the subject of the Holy Spirit, He will lead you. The Holy Spirit can lead you. He can give you spiritual gifts. Alright? He speaks to your spirit. Alright? He speaks to what? Your spirit. So never feel you alone. He will tell you that you are a child of God. Pray now. Things will happen. It's the Holy Spirit. Don't say, ah, you know, I feel like I should pray. You're not feeling like. It's not a feeling. You are being laid. There's no one in the Bible who says, and they felt like. There are no emotions. It's not a feeling. Everyone there was laid. It doesn't say, and Jesus Christ felt like going to the desert and pray. <laughs> it says he was laid by the Spirit. What he felt. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling like fasting. These are, are mistakes, technical mistakes in your walk with the Holy Spirit. Never say those words again. Can you say that?